Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I'm excited to bring you more information on Star Wars Battlefront 2 that we have learned from the Star Wars celebration in Anaheim. Now, this information came out yesterday. Uh, there was basically an hour-long panel on the game talking about both single-player and multiplayer, plus a brand new trailer on Star Wars Battlefront 2, considerably different from the leaked trailer, which does lead a few people to question whether or not that trailer was even leaked in the first place. Regardless, before I get into the details, here is the trailer in case you haven't already seen it. I've waited 30 years for this. I still remember my last orders. Day the real war began. The rebellion cannot be allowed to persist. We weren't expecting special forces. That's the point, Sergeant. Impossible. Commander, what do we do now? We avenge our Emperor. All right, now there is plenty of new information in that trailer, probably mostly single player footage, but I imagine some of those clips are also from multiplayer, some really cool information in there. And along with this trailer, EA has launched the Star Wars Battlefront 2 website with more concrete information on the game. And I'll kind of get into each panel now and talk about some of that concrete info, and then we'll also add to it with what they talked about in the Star Wars Celebration panel. So the first little page on the website says, Master Your Hero's Journey. The prequels, original trilogy, and new era meet in an expanded multiplayer experience in galactic scale space combat. Play iconic heroes that bring distinct abilities to the battlefront or join the fight in an emotionally gripping single player story. Your Star Wars hero journey has begun. Now we already figured that it was spanning multiple eras from the leaked trailer, but it is just here officially confirmed that we're getting prequels, original trilogy, and the new film eras all mixed together, which probably means any of the sort of surrounding stories from some of the TV shows as well. Very excited for this massive era mix up. Now when it comes to single player story, we did get some cool new information. The website says, Forge a new path is Aiden Versio, commander of Inferno Squad, an Imperial Special Forces unit equally lethal on the ground and in space. Encounter many of Star Wars' greatest characters in a story of revenge, betrayal, and redemption that spans 30 years. Now regarding the single player aspect of the game, the panel actually talked about it quite a bit and there's more information. Regarding the story itself, this is officially approved by Lucasfilm as canon for the Star Wars universe. So this is going to cover events that might uh, be told or talked about in Star Wars films. So this is pretty exciting and anyone who is hugely interested in the storyline or especially what happened between episode 6 and episode 7 should be really interested in this single player. Now as a cool twist on things, the story is going to be told from an Imperial sympathizer's point of view. 
Aiden Versio is an elite operative for the Empire. She commands Inferno Squadron, which are very skilled in both ground combat and space combat. One of the developers actually said he's excited for us to play the single player because they want us to empathize with the Empire's perspective while we play the game. So if the story is told well enough, hopefully it will get the player to feel that way or understand the Empire's perspective and see the Rebels as maybe more of the menace. They've also created a new planet that is Aiden's homeworld. It's called Vardos and Aiden's father, who is I think a Imperial Admiral, has actually brought this planet into the Empire um, and they've gone willingly rather than the Empire having to force their control over this planet. It's a world of Imperial sympathizers. So that's an interesting concept in the Star Wars universe as well. And it'll be cool to see that as part of the story. In fact, in the trailer, we see some combat taking place on this planet so I imagine that will be worked into the multiplayer as well. Another really cool thing about the single player is that we're not just going to have the opportunity to play as Aiden but when the storyline progresses to the necessary points we will have the opportunity to play as Luke Skywalker and Kylo Ren. Now we did get a glimpse of Luke Skywalker in the trailer and it looks like Aiden might actually encounter him at one point and who knows they might actually have a battle. Moving on to the next website page, they talk about the expanded multiplayer. Join up to 40 players in massive multiplayer fights in authentic locations across all eras. Revel in deep class-based online gameplay, pilot a wide variety of land and air vehicles, and control iconic characters with distinct abilities that can turn the tide of the battle. Now, the new information here is the class-based combat. This is really interesting because uh, the last Battlefront did not have classes. You just sort of picked a soldier and messed around with your cards that could give you different abilities and picked a different weapon. According to the pre-order bonus page, there will be four different classes, officers, assault, heavy, and specialist. The next page talks about space battles. Wage war in spectacular space battle scenarios. Weave between asteroids, fly across Imperial dockyards, and take down massive capital ships. Pilot renowned craft like the Millennium Falcon or Luke Skywalker's X-Wing in exciting dogfights with up to 24 different players. Now the website didn't mention nor did they talk about it on the panel as to whether or not the flying mechanics are going to be upgraded at all. I think this is sort of a key mechanic that has to be part of the game in order for it to be more enjoyable in the space battles is the flying characteristics and mechanics and everything about it have to be a little bit more, I wouldn't say realistic, but skill based as opposed to just sort of pointing in the direction you want to go. Hopefully that is a change we'll see in Battlefront 2, but again, only time will tell. The next page talks about the iconic heroes and villains, characters from every single era. Play as and against Star Wars' most feared villains and cherished heroes from all three eras, including Kylo Ren, Rey, Darth Maul, Yoda, and many more. Unique, upgradable abilities ensure that class characters bring their direct powers and personality to the battle. And they talked a little bit more about this on the panel. There's going to be an extensive progression system, one that's not just about your normal soldiers or your starfighters, but also about the heroes. So perhaps the more you play a hero, the more abilities and cool things you can make them do. They also mentioned that the heroes are going to be much more physical than they were before. Unfortunately, this was kind of a vague discussion, but they said it's going to be a bit of a change up in the way that you experience playing with your hero it's going to feel more real more interactive more alive um, i don't know if the physicality is going to directly translate into the combat of the hero but uh, it sounds like they've improved them in some way we'll just have to kind of wait and see the next page talks about split screen co-op the game is going to feature split screen co-op and the ability to basically play with your friend in split screen and then also upgrade and progress your character in split screen and then take that into the multiplayer battle as well the last page talks about the progression system. Customize and progress. Tailor unique abilities for each hero, trooper, and starfighter to gain the upper hand in battle with Star Wars Battlefront 2's diverse and powerful progression system. The path to victory is yours to decide. Now this to me is one of the coolest things that they were talking about on the panel. They wanted to stress how much of a progression system they have and how that not only carries over to each class of trooper in the game, which they sort of lose mentioned could be like sniper, trooper, heavy gunner, um, officer, 
but uh, it's going to carry over to the heroes and the starfighters. So the more you play with the classes or the heroes or the starfighters, you will unlock new abilities and progress those characters and get more probably side grades into how you can play them. This is exciting. The idea of having a much bigger and expanded progression system is really exciting. By the end of Star Wars Battlefront, the previous game, there was a lot more progression system added to the game. Unfortunately, it wasn't there from the start, but it sounds like it will be for Battlefront 2. Now, when EA mentioned the pre-order bonuses on the panel, there was a bit of booing. Um, I do want to correct something that I talked about in my last video, or rather clarify something as we didn't have information then, but the pre-order bonuses are going to be for like different skins for some of the heroes. So like Rey and Kylo Ren will have different skins from the latest movie that's coming out. And so if you want those skins for them, you'll get them with the pre-order bonus. And there's also going to be some different ship skins in there, like the more updated Millennium Falcon skin from the recent films will be something that you get as a pre-order bonus. So uh, luckily, it's only going to be cosmetic bonuses, no sort of in-game items that give you a tactical advantage. A few other small details that we gleaned from the panel. Uh, Camino will be a map in there. We see a cool concept art with the old school slave one with the original colors or the prequel colors rather. And uh, then there's also going to be Tauntauns that are available to ride in multiplayer. There's obviously going to be droids from the Separatist army, which includes Vulture droids when it comes to starfighters. Um, and also from the new films, there's going to be like First Order TIE Fighter. So there sounds like there's going to be a huge amount of stuff in the game. And the dev said that the quantity of stuff in this game exceeds the previous game in every front. There's more weapons, more vehicles, more heroes, more soldiers. Like everything has just been expanded hugely. So that's really exciting, especially when one of the criticisms of the original game was just uh, not being enough content. It sounds like that might not be a problem this time around. Now, as for release date, it's coming out November 17, a little bit before the next movie launches, which seems pretty much in line with the original Battlefront. And if you pre-order the game, you'll get it three days early on November 14th. So, that's basically all the information we have on Star Wars Battlefront 2 at the moment. I'm sure more info will be coming out as it gets closer to launch. I have to say I've gone from cautiously optimistic to considerably more optimistic. It sounds like they are making a game that is remedying a lot of the problems with the original Battlefront. But again, they haven't talked about the skill curve in any way publicly yet, so that does give me a little bit of pause. If they've added a huge progression system to the game but made very little progress to the skill curve, then it could still be a situation that it's a really exciting game to play for maybe a month and then the player base will die off. So we'll have to wait and see what they have to say about the rest of the game. But again, I'm getting a bit more excited with all of this news. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap. Signing off.